Hey everyone, my name is Ari and I'm a quantum hardware engineer at IBM Quantum and I help people build careers as quantum engineers because if we are going to build a large scale and fault tolerant quantum computer, well, we need quantum engineers to do it. And I want in this video emphasize my point that I make that if you want to become a quantum engineer, you should not be, you know, going headfirst into the Qiskit and the quantum information and the crazy quantum algorithm stuff. You should be developing a practical and tangible skill. And I'm going to be substantiating that claim by looking at the IBM job postings that are live right now on uh, July 25th, 2025. And so what I did is I just sorted by United States, I typed in quantum, and I opened all the ones that were actually for quantum computing. And so let's just kind of take a step back and look at this tab, these two tab groups, I have engineering, and then I have like theory and algorithms. Okay, and so if we look here, there's 16 total jobs, and four of them are for theory and algorithms. So that means that only 25% of the total jobs that are open right now are for theory and for algorithms, the ones that kind of require that Qiskit level, that that uh, quantum information, that kind of Nielsen and Chuang type of knowledge that you need. Um, and actually, this first one that I pulled up, I only just barely put in the theory and algorithms, because if you actually look at the job description, most of the skills that they actually want for this position is somebody who has knowledge of standard kind of like DevOps and performance and software engineering. And I don't know too much about this stuff because I'm not a software engineer, but if you just look, IO concurrency, Go, Rust, C++, all these kind of observability tools that they list here. Um, Kubernetes, Red Hat, OpenShift. The, there's only one bullet point that says quantum circuits, quantum optimizers, and quantum algorithms. And, right, and that's in the preferred. That's not even the mandatory. So if you were just a software engineer and you had skills in all of these, and then you spent maybe a week or two, maybe even a little longer, studying, going through some of the old uh, Qiskit summer schools, and just kind of building a baseline understanding in quantum circuits, optimizers, and algorithms, then you would be very qualified for this role, and they would very likely hire you if you actually were really good at all of these things here. And notice that this one, the preferred education is a master's degree and not a PhD. So I just barely put this one in the theory and algorithms. This really, I think, should live in engineering, but I want to give theory and algorithms as much credit as I possibly can. So here's one that you know does require a doctorate degree and does require Qiskit and prior research experience and you know knowledge of error mitigation, quantum control, error suppression, okay, the more kind of theoretical aspects of quantum information. Fine, that's okay. If you, want to, if you are into that kind of stuff, then you should study that kind of stuff. But this channel is for quantum engineers, people that want to help revolutionize quantum computing and actually build a quantum computer that will revolutionize the world, right? We need people who can design this infrastructure. We need people who can make quantum computing a reality by building the hardware that controls it, building the hardware that cools it down, and then building the actual quantum chips in a way that's scalable. So let's kind of go into some of the engineering focused roles and what kind of skills you can use there. So I like this one, flex cable design and signal integrity engineer. And if we go here, um, you know, it's a plus if you have a doctorate degree, and it's a plus if you have had experience working with quantum computing or quantum devices. But really, what they want you to know is microwave design tools, right? Keysight ADS, ANSYS, Cadence, Cosmo. Do you know how to go in the lab and then measure things with a spectrum analyzer and oscilloscope? And so these are really just classical electrical engineering skills that you need for this type of role. And particularly for this group in Rochester, oh no, this one's in Yorktown. But in any case, <laughs> you know, this would, um, this, this role would be just somebody who is a solid electrical engineer with solid electrical engineering fundamentals. And then if you have experience, like for example, maybe in your undergrad, you worked in a quantum computing lab, or maybe uh, you know in grad school, getting your master's, you contributed a little bit to a quantum computing lab. That's enough experience working with quantum devices to really set you apart. There was one in Rochester, Minnesota. Let me see. Ah, it was this one. This entry-level logic design engineer, Rochester, Minnesota. So this group, they're literally preferring to hire somebody entry-level with a bachelor's degree to help do kind of the logic design, the VLSI and kind of the Verilog gateway for ASIC controls and FPGAs as well, it looks like.
I haven't really read through all of these too much. I've just kind of been looking at the broad themes. And so you can see here, there is no PhD required, but this is for the quantum computing team, the people that are going to build quantum control systems and the people that are going to scale up the quantum control systems that will allow us to build a actually useful quantum computer. We're not going to go through every single one here, but I just want to emphasize the point that you should be focusing on a tangible and practical skill. Some sort of engineer. I think electrical engineering is the best, but you can also do kind of mechanical engineering and then delve kind of into the cryogenics. But some kind of electrical engineering where you know how to get in the lab and use test equipment. Here it is coming up again. Microwave design engineer, Cosmol, Keysight ADS, ANSYS HFSS. I think probably the most important skill for quantum computing is probably RF and microwave engineering under the umbrella of electrical engineering. So that's something that is going to be very important for you to learn and think about, um, even if you know you don't necessarily want to go into the RF and microwave engineering. Understanding it, especially for superconducting qubits, is going to be a plus. So again, I'm going to say this: if you want to do the theory and the algorithms, of course, do that. But this channel again is for the quantum engineers, the people that want to build a large scale and fault tolerant quantum computer. So if you want to be that person that revolutionizes quantum computing by being part of the team that builds a large scale and fault tolerant quantum computer, click the top link in the description. Basically what I'm putting together is really exciting. I'm putting together this exclusive community of people who are really dedicated to becoming quantum engineers. And I'm essentially providing them what I wish I had when I was trying to build my career. And I'm just essentially going to make it like very easy for you to stand out from the crowd and hopefully get you a job actually working in quantum computing at a place like IBM or wherever else working in quantum computing so that you can help revolutionize quantum computing and quantum computing hardware. So click that link, but let's just keep going, right? You know, cryogenic assembly engineer. I love this one because they just require a GED. You could be a high school graduate. And as long as you have, you know, uh, hands-on basically experience building stuff, that's what they want. So maybe like, I don't know, you worked as a technician in some other company and you were building kind of vacuum systems or whatever, right? As long as you're good with your hands and it looks like they probably uh, prefer somebody who has done some sort of cryogenic assembly and whatnot, but you could get that just by being a technician for you know some other lab um, you know at a university or... Uh, if you had prior experience just working with your hands. So again, like they probably would give this one to somebody who had a bachelor's degree and worked in a lab where they were getting hands on with this kind of stuff. But what I'm saying is that they're not requiring a PhD for this. Basically, you're the person who would be um, sort of building, I, I think from this role, you'd be kind of the one like assembling some of the stuff in the deployment quantum computers. And then you'd be setting up the dilution fridges and all the infrastructure around that. But I mean, Honestly, the first time that I saw a dilution fridge, like in person, I was so excited, right? Um, it's really cool. It's still cool to be able to go in there and be the person responsible for building these quantum systems. So by and large, my point is that you should develop a skill that is technical and practically useful for the field of quantum computing. You shouldn't waste your time trying to, especially if you want to be a quantum engineer, you shouldn't waste all your time trying to learn like the theory and the algorithms. Basically, all you need to do is develop a sound technical skill that is practical to quantum computing, get really good at that. And then on top of that, learn some quantum computing, learn a little bit of the basics, learn a baseline of what is important for quantum information, and quantum algorithms, but nothing beyond what you think you need to know. Don't waste your time. The most important thing is developing the tangible skill and not worrying all about the algorithms. And I'm not saying it's not important. You should still study it a little bit because you need to understand kind of how a quantum system works, but you don't need to be an expert in it. And my point with all of these jobs is to prove it. There was one more job that I wanted to show. Hot. I think it was this one. This is like super cool. So this is like kind of the advanced version of what I'm talking about, where you're somebody who has a solid understanding of some sort of technical skill, but then you're also like a quantum uh, quantum expert, right? You're also a quantum algorithms expert. So basically from what I understand here is you essentially want to be a low level software or embedded engineer, kind of like at the firmware level. 
And then in addition to that, you have knowledge of quantum information and quantum error correction, because you're going to be kind of designing the systems that would help us build an error corrected quantum computer. And without an error corrected quantum computer, we're never going to have a useful quantum computer, at least with superconducting qubits. So I think this one is super cool. Um, like I'm assuming this one requires more understanding of quantum information and quantum error correction than um, you know most of the other degrees uh, or jobs here. But at the same time, I still think that if you were really good at like firmware or low level code, you could spend some time self studying this, and then be in you know a good spot to get this job. So with that, take the proof that 75% of the jobs open right now at IBM are really quantum engineering roles. And I know I talk a little bit about PhD versus no PhD. I would say that some of these definitely do require a PhD. Let me see if I can find it. So like this quantum hardware design engineer, this looks like you'd be on the team that's um, developing the actual quantum processing units and ac the actual gates that are on the quantum processors and like kind of like how the qubits are designed. And I would say that unless you had a really good master's education where you really focused on learning those things, you probably need a PhD. But look at the skills that you need. RF and microwave engineering, ANSYS and uh, looks like Keysight, right? This kind of electromagnetic simulation knowledge, mask and PCB layout, cadence, Allegro, those type of things, right? Those are the skills that you need. So even if you do want to get a PhD, you should still study electrical engineering, study RF and microwave engineering. That is the skill that is exceptionally important, not just for superconducting quantum computing, but just quantum computing in general. So don't necessarily just take my word for it. Look at the evidence from the jobs that are available right now for quantum computing. IBM announced their plan to build the world's first large-scale fault-tolerant quantum computer very soon, in just a couple of years. I'm scared that we're not going to be able to do that without the right team of people. And that's why I'm trying to motivate people to look at these jobs and be like, oh, yeah, I can do this. I don't need to get distracted by all the quantum algorithms. I can learn that. I can learn what I need to know. I can learn a little quantum information once I develop my skills in, for example, RF and microwave engineering. And that's pretty much what I did. And I'm not an expert in quantum information or quantum algorithms or quantum error correction. I've recently had to start learning a little bit about quantum error correction because I work on control systems and that's a very important aspect of <laughs> control systems is being able to provide um, you know, the right pulses to do quantum error correction. So you can really learn what you need to learn um, you know, as you kind of figure out what you want to do in the field and the exact niche of quantum computing we want to get into. So with that, everyone, if you want to build a career as a quantum engineer, click that top link in the description right now. Do good work, and I will see you in the next video.